That's what I'm talking about. I go by the name of DJ Filthy Rich. I'm honored to be a part of this movement, man. Coalition DJs, this is our 10th anniversary, and we're going to bring the power panel to the stage. Everybody that's going to take one of these seats is a legend in the game, so I want you to listen to everything that comes out of their mouth. I'm going to bring my moderator to the stage, the one and only Mr. Ian Burke. Make some noise for Ian Burke. Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? What's up, Ian? Hey! Come on, y'all, let's make some noise. This is the 10th anniversary of the Coalition DJs. Let's give it up for them real, real loud, y'all. Stop bullshitting. <laughs> All right, that's for sure. Big shout out to Big X, DJ Funky, doing it for 10 years. That's, now that's longevity. All right, so I'm going to uh, bring up the panelists that I know that are here right now. Starting with the man who couldn't wait to be announced, so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get a... Most of these folks I don't work with, you know what I'm saying? But uh, this man right here, we go back how many years? Uh, since Atlantis Music Fest back in the day. Man, yeah. yeah, when you were doing the record thing in Florida, it was in Florida, right? Ah, uh, yeah. And then you, you know, you grabbed on to this little kid, this little unknown kid, and turned him into a, helped him into a star. Some, some kid named B.O.B., you know, you started managing and stuff like that. Y'all give it up for my man T.J. from T.J. D.J. Louder! Yes, yes. Who do we have on deck? I can't. Okay, we're going to bring up. This man is definitely legendary in the business. I'm proud to be working with him right now. Y'all, this man's DJ for just about everywhere. He's toured all over the world, opened up for Michael Jackson, has been on Sinbad, he's been on the Arsenio Hall show, and he's he just did that, he's done everything. Formerly, y'all may have known him from Boom 102, it's a Boom 102, but he's doing his own thing right now. Y'all give it up nice and loud, nice and proud for my man, DJ Nabs. Come on, y'all. Okay, all right. I don't have any notes on me, so I'm just talking to Yeah, Rick Ross from Capitol. Rick, Rick, where you at, man? Rick Ross, we go way back, too. Oh, there you go. I didn't even see you back there. Rick helped me out with Arrested Development back in the day, and now he's rolling with Capitol. Y'all give it up for my man Rick Ross, please. All right, Hurricane Dave. Yeah, where's Hurricane Dave at? Ah, oh, there he is. Hurricane Dave, he's one of the people we're going to have to work together soon. I work with just about everybody on the panel. we got to get to so, All right, we got to get it. Y'all give it in for Hurricane. Hurricane Dave, y'all. Give it up. All right, this next brother needs no real introduction. You know what I'm saying. Y'all know his music. Y'all know his championship belt. You know there's no other pastor like Pastor Troy. Y'all give it up. Loud and proud. What's happening? You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Do we have a, we have another mic or? Yeah. At Jamal. Okay, cool. Perfect. Check, check. Oh man, come on. This girl has been part of the 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 what do you call it? The record selling situation. What do you call it? retail? retail stores for a minute. She's helped break a lot of artists from A to Z. Y'all give it up for my beautiful young queen, Arlinda Garrett, please. Y'all give it up. Yeah. We all bow down. All right, so I think we got more, right, X? All right, so check it out. This is the longevity panel. I want to thank everybody for being a part of it. I want to thank the audience for being here and supporting 10 years of the Coalition DJs. So we're going to jump right into it. Just real brief, and we'll start with you, TJ. Just longevity. What does it mean to you and some of the things that you have been able to accomplish here in this city and beyond, please? Uh, I mean, longevity is, is everything, you know what I'm saying? Anybody can pop up and have a little quick burst of success, <clears throat> but being able to maintain it over the years and then most importantly, staying relevant, you know what I'm saying, to the whole scene, uh, it's everything. 
Um, I don't know what y'all know about me. Uh, I have a company called TJ's DJs. Used to do a lot of conferences back in Tallahassee, Florida. I created an event, fam, you yeah, yeah. Created an event called the Ozone Awards. Uh, that was real big. You know, we had a lot of success with that. I've never been responsible for a lot of artists. I manage B.O.B., I manage uh, Trap Beckham, I uh, used to manage K. Camp, Scotty ATL, um, got T. Payne, his deal, and, and helped blast off his whole career. But just a lot of stuff throughout the years. So I'm just glad to be here, and, uh, ready to share whatever knowledge y'all need. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, I think longevity comes from your passion. Uh, because when you get started doing whatever it is you, 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 you want to do, you know, that you're doing already, whether it's being an MC, writing songs, making beats, being on the radio, being a DJ, wanting to be in the club, whatever it is, you know, it comes from a passion, it comes from a place inside, because you don't really know what it's going to be like. You don't know what the money's going to be like, you don't know how, if you're going to be good at it or not. And I think once you identify that passion, then you find a way to survive in this business because that's what you have to do. You have to reinvent. So everybody that I know, everybody on this panel that I know, are, are major reinventors. You know what I mean? Reinventing yourself and using your passion and your strengths to keep you in the game. That's really what it's about. So uh, that's, that's what I'll say for now. Let me just say this. Longevity in this business is based on relationships. There are a lot of good people in this business, but the great people in this business have great relationships. And for you to be in this business for longevity, it's all about relationships. This business, when I first started 31 years ago, the first thing they told me was, make sure you protect and cherish your relationships. And that's what has kept me in this business for as long as I have been. Now your passion, and, 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 and to piggyback off of what Nav said, your passion for this business has to override the money. Because if you get in this business based on making money, then you're in the wrong business. And there are a lot of people that can tell you that they've been in the business for a long time and have not been successfully making money but because they are passionate about the music. And I think a lot of times we forget why we got into this game. We got in it because we love the music. We're passionate about the music. If you're passionate about the music, the money will come. But you have to be consistent, you have to have great relationships, and you have to be people of integrity, whether you're male or female, in this business. And that's what's gonna keep you around. Uh, for me, longevity is uh, a couple of different things. I've been doing this probably longer than most folks on this panel, believe it or not, although my age don't show it. But the number one thing I'll tell you is do the right thing by people. You know, do right by them because you never know. You know, we talked about relationships. Rick mentioned that relationships are important, but you got to do the right thing in those relationships and you got to have passion. Do it for the passion. And the other thing I'll tell you is to be like water because water, and this is not my saying, somebody out there who really reads a lot of self-help books know what I'm about to say. Be like water because water takes the shape of whatever it's in, or what's, whatever it has to go. You have to be able to adapt. Some folks say, well, Hurricane, you're an OG, but you're running a, a young hip-hop station uh, called Hot 1079. How do you survive when really you play music for people that's not even your generation? You gotta be able to adapt. You know, so whatever that current trend is, you got to be able to mold yourself to fit whatever's popping. And so, you know, longevity to me, do the right thing, uh, adaptability, and um, and be passionate about what you're doing. Just to uh, kind of piggyback off that, longevity is about relationships, especially in this business, any business, honestly. Uh, I started in this city in 19... 94 or 5 and I met X. He was one of the first people who helped me garner the word record promoter as the queen, queen record promoter. So I've been promoting records here in this city since the 90s. I had to show up tonight to give homage to X and the DGL Coalition. I watched them grow. That's longevity. Longevity for me, however, is being able to continue to eat and live 
on a business that I love. I don't have to go do hair. I don't have to go to the post office. I eat and sleep music. And it's because of my name. My word is my name. And I won't break my word for nobody. So that's what longevity is for me. Thank you. They got me behind all these heavy hitters. So longevity to me is a little different being an artist, you know. Longevity to me, coming in the game 20 years ago, I always wanted to make timeless music. I never really was concerned about, you know, what was just going on at the time. I wanted to make music that could last forever. So 20 years later, man, I'm still booked every weekend doing my thing and it's a blessing man but it's all about me not making music for the time you know it's a lot of music this thing came through and just my run you know what i mean they was leaning with it they was rocking with it they were snapping their fingers they was doing a lot of things you know what i mean but i always stayed down with pastor troy do man and uh, we still live it so do your own thing man yeah, i like that that's what's up y'all give it up again for these guys and ladies and ladies all right, I just want to I just want to ask a couple of questions and then um you know we'll, we'll keep this thing moving. But you know Atlanta's been doing this thing, man, since the, the early '90s, act like '90, like '91. You know what I'm saying? I know personally between uh, Rick and um, DJ Nav, we've been rocking for just as long. But miraculously enough, we have still remained, you know, in the forefront, especially in hip hop music. Ever since, uh, you know, Drake, e Drake 3000 uttered those immortal words, the South has got something to say. You know what I'm saying? So what I want to know from y'all is, what do you think it was that has kept Atlanta so much in the forefront? And, and given, what has given Atlanta that long chair beef with? No limit and everything, man. The whole Atlanta New Orleans rivalry has always been a big thing. At the time, of course, everybody knew No Limit was at the top, man. They were dropping albums every weekend. It was crazy down here in Atlanta. And I just came with this song, man, that gave Atlanta some real pride. You know, no more playing GA. We read it. And it really just put the attention back. Down here in Atlanta, man, we weren't really making gangster music like that, man. That was really the beginning of a different sound. You know, Outkast was doing their thing, Goody Mob was doing their thing, but when they heard those gunshots and all that stuff, that was a different sound from Atlanta. The fast snares, the tat, 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 tat. It's still on the same pace today, so no more playing GA was pivotal, baby. Do your research. <laughs> For me, I think that it's the um, the people here, people like the Dave, the Hurricane Dave, who will give a record a shot. I brought that Master P movement here. Yeah, the first one was uh, Ice Cream Man. <laughs> and then it goes on from there. But it was because of the programmers, the music directors, people who will give new artists that shot. Because if you can't get a shot, what is it? That's it. That's what it is for me. Yeah, I would say that Atlanta is definitely still that cutting edge city. Uh, it's been that way a long time, and it's probably going to continue to be that way. You know, from a uh, just a whole fashion and swag. Um, so many artists actually are from other places. They move to Atlanta because they want to have an Atlanta zip code so they can say they're from Atlanta. Most people from Atlanta ain't even from Atlanta. <laughs> Most of us are transplants, but people want to be here because it's it's the hot city, you know? I mean, we talk about the music industry, we talk about the film industry, or we talk about fashion. We're cutting edge, and that's one of the things that are important. When it comes to new music, you know, even to this day, every Wednesday at Hot 107.9, uh, and Nabs knows because when he used to work there, he used to walk through the halls, we literally meet with independent, up-and-coming artists every week. And a lot of radio stations don't do that, but we set appointments and we meet with them every week because we want to know what's hot or what's happening before it makes it to the radio. Okay. Um, I'll add to that just by saying, um, you know, it's interesting to go to other cities and um, try to have that conversation about, you know, every city wants to, every artist wants to put their city on. And um, is that, is that going to happen? It's not really for me to say. But the one thing I can say in my 30 years in, in Atlanta is that there's the foundation, 
whether you call it old Atlanta or whatever you want to call it, and then there's the new blood that's consistently being injected into the Atlanta's scene. Like Dave says, with the movies, fashion, and it's everything, new artists, etc. And when you got both of them, you got so much history here in Atlanta, and you got a new, like new blood and new life, it just makes it work. And I think that's why Atlanta is what it is and will continue to you know, do great things. The the foundation of Atlanta has always been about the music. If, if we want to go back, I mean, I started back in the mid-80s. But even before that, you had a lot of artists moving to Atlanta, whether it be Isaac Hayes, whether it be Curtis Mayfield, whether it be Nancy Wilson. Like, and everybody who is somebody has played in Atlanta. So Atlanta has a rich history of just music, period. And I think back in 1986, 87, when a lot of the kids start coming down here, going to school, they start bringing in the different vibes, the different music start coming from all over the place. And a lot of people stayed. So you're talking about some of the early pioneers. You had, you know, you had Raheem and, and the tunes. You had MC Shadi. You had a whole bunch of guys that were just really just building the foundation for Atlanta in terms of the music. And it never stopped. You know, from LA and Babyface moving here and bringing the face here. So it's always been a rich history of music. And it's really just never stopped. And, you know, now everybody even wants to live in Atlanta, visit Atlanta, play in Atlanta, record in Atlanta. It's just it's just a melting pot for music. And you you guys don't even understand the, the other side. It's a whole new movement that's about to start in Atlanta. And nobody even knows about it. But because I deal with kids on a regular basis, I'm seeing some different stuff that's come, that's about to take over Atlanta. And the music scene is about to change again. So, you know, we have to be on the cutting edge. Dave is always out in the, in the club. I think he's probably the only PD in the country I know be out in the clubs more than anybody. He's out more than any other record record. He's out more than me. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I, I think the love for the city has continued to bring the music uh, to, the, to the forefront. And, uh, hey man, I'm just glad to be at ATLN, man. Born and raised here, Brady Baby, all that. So, so we really take pride in, in the music and the history of the city. And, you know, we just want to continue to just give back and making sure that the music scene continues to grow. Well, <laughs> shoot, I just want to add, uh, Atlanta really, for me, is an incubator for creative talent. You know what I'm saying? For all forms. Um, I travel the world, travel all around the states, but I have yet to come to a city like this that has an infrastructure to support uh, creative people of all types. You know what I'm saying? So, special. All right, that's what's up, guys. So listen, so I, you know, this is a cool question, and, I, and I'm okay. You can kind of hear I'm okay with answering this question because I had to deal with this shit all the time. You ain't from Atlanta. You ain't from Atlanta. Well, now my, I got a daughter born in Atlanta, so now now I got blood related to Atlanta. So, but there, but there is like some hidden hate from people who were born in Atlanta who say people came from other cities and took over our city. We didn't come to take over your city. We love your city. That's why we're here. The, we, you know, this this internal hate, this black out black hate that, that that transcends even the entertainment business of you ain't from here, but you represent in our city. That, that's we gotta stop that bullshit. We really do. If you're from Atlanta, be proud to be from Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta and I'm proud to be in Atlanta. It ain't no back and forth that has to go back and forth. We gotta cut that shit out. We really do. Did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah, you, you touched on it. You touched on some very important parts. You touched on some very important parts. Go ahead, Orlando. All right. Well, for me, again, I have to relate it to what I know. And I know that in the 90s, when I brought that gangster rap music here, when I was driving Ice Cube and Jay-Z around in a, a minivan, I know that it was one radio station who would play my shit, and that was hot. Okay? And they're still here today. And the cultural relevance has evolved from not just that, but now there's a boom channel. I mean, I'm not from here, but I'm from here. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been here since the 90s. I have dug in, I've paid my dues. We've all worked. We're still working, we're still making hits. 
my most recent hit, uh, Colonel Lau. <laughs> And, and who helped with that? Atlanta. Atlanta helped me break these records. So as far as my vote, I'm going for the people who are here that are movers and shakers. They're, they're making things happen. They're innovative. And they're thinking ahead of the curve. They're not waiting till the music dies out and go, oh, what are we going to do now? No, they're that next new thing on the horizon. Well, with me, man, uh, you know, 20 years ago, in college and everything, man, I was very excited about, you know, just outcasts and going to these different cities, man, and uh, just seeing how Atlanta was finally getting on the map, man. They started respecting our music, everything that was coming from here, man, from outcasts to good about Everybody know we had the booty shake music going on out here. Much love to that whole movement, you know what I mean, that whole freak nick party vibe. But then we came with a different kind of music in Atlanta, man. We were listening to it, but then we finally started coming with that music from here. And we still making it from here. You know what I mean? It's a lot of pride from being from Atlanta, from being from Georgia, man, from the hats, from the jerseys. You see people from other cities still with the jerseys and the cricket A hats on and stuff like that, man. So ATL played a big part of it, man. You know, outcast with them just Stepping up, man, starting to show the ATL swag, the Cadillacs, how we were living down here, man. I think it was very pivotal. Well, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna shift it a little bit because I know Ian was initially referring to uh, the uh, conversation with uh, with Jermaine Dupree said that uh, he was asked. This is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Right? So J Jermaine Dupree was asked by the Breakfast Club whether or not um, he felt he had more sick, uh, impact on Atlanta's hip hop scene than Outkast. And basically, Jermaine said, for those who don't know, that as far as rap was concerned, Outkast, but as far as the culture, he said himself, right? That's right. Uh, so what's the question from this? <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Is it true? Like, like, no, 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 no. I don't want to touch it from the Jermaine right. aspect or the or, or, or Outkast, right. especially with Kujo Goody pointing the point shotgun at me from off the stage. Right. <laughs> I just want to know what your thoughts are about what really made Atlanta culturally relevant back in that time. Okay, so let me just do this just so I can kind of put it in perspective for myself, right? And I'm, I, I, just so bear with me one second. If the first rap record came out in 1979, right? Right? Sugar Hill Gang. Now, of course, we know the culture started in 73. I started DJing in 84, all right? I moved to Atlanta in 88. So, in 88, MC Shadi was that nigga in the club, right? Raheem the Dream. They used to, they used to also play Who Rock, D Rock, D Rock, and Falls on Prior National Old National. So, even though, again, I'm one of those transplants, but I was here. It really early in Atlanta when it wasn't too much of a scene. It was the Miami scene, it was Texas music, a born MJG, right? And uh, there was the Hard Boys, there was the, the, the label Itch Your Mind, right? Now, now I'm not just telling you what I know. I, I own every, every record I'm telling you about, I got in my house, right? So from there, it moved to Miami base, ATL base, right? And then in 92, which was my first real break, I came to DJ with Criss Cross. In 92, the groups that were pop, that came out of Atlanta, as far as hip hop's concerned, because I know again, Atlanta got a deeper history than just rap, but I'm just talking about rap. Uh, Criss Cross, TLC, Arrested Development, were the groups that, when you went on MTV, where y'all from? Atlanta, Atlanta. It wasn't the Atlanta sound because in 95, Hot 1079 came. Atlanta got its first rap station in, because prior to that, it was on the Fresh Party. And now, all I'm saying is evolution. The shit is just a seed, and the shit just grew and grew and grew. You, you know what I mean? So it, it's influenced by everything. Outcast came 95, 96, right? I mean, that right? 91? 93, 94. 94, okay. Chris Lover Lover, Ludacris is my intern, for those that know, right? And his favorite rapper was was com uh, was common because Chris from Chicago, but Chris was around long enough that he picked up on what it meant, what what 
what the ATL slang and culture was, right? And the last thing I'm gonna say, just, just on the part of Atlanta and the transplant part, my thing, what I've learned in being in radio, my whole, almost my whole entire time in Atlanta is, is that you can't touch the people in the nightclubs and at the stage and the concerts and shit. You gotta go to the schools and be in the community and that's what Hopkins Seminar does and that's how you infiltrate. That's why somebody don't, see, I, I DJ Sierra's wedding and she said, oh, you, I used to listen to you in high school. Now I know that makes me old, right? But I, didn't, I had no, no idea I touched her, but that's because I was on the radio when she was in high school and I was in those schools because that's what radio stations do. So I think it's a melting pot for a reason and I, you know, I can't sit on transplant with, I, we here together. And so, you know, that's it. That's what's up, okay. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, so listen, oh, are you going to say something, Ricky? Now, let me just, I think because me and Ian came up together, so we've been around, we've been around this Atlanta music scene a long time. But let me just give a, let me just give a, Ian, can I just give like a brief history? Absolutely. Of this culture in Atlanta. Absolutely. Okay, so I started back in 1986 when I first started working for a major record company. My first artist that I had an interaction with was Jermaine. Jermaine was not even driving a car. Jermaine used to get records from me. From that, Jermaine had Silk Times Leather. That whole movement started to come. Me and Ian started rest messing around with the rest of the development. But that was a whole nother culture going on that I didn't even know about, and I'm here in the city. I didn't know what the Dungeon family was doing with Outkast and Goody Mob and all those guys. So there was so much music going on in Atlanta, you couldn't catch everything. Now, remind you, I said, back then, a lot of people were coming to Atlanta to go to the AU and come in and bring in Go-Go from DC, bring in, you know, New York Hip Hop down, the West Coast was, hadn't really kicked off yet, but later on, Ice T and all that stuff started coming. So you had all these people migrating to Atlanta to to have this special culture of music and the music scene and just the nightlife in Atlanta was just totally different than any other city. You couldn't go anywhere in the country and get what you could get in Atlanta. So, you know, so you got to go back and see this, it's always been here. You know, now, I don't get into all that shit about, you know, whether you come from New York or LA and you brought culture here. Atlanta's been the influence for every fucking form of music for the last 30 years. People either came here to record, work with producer here or songwriter here. And it's all, it, is, it was all done in Atlanta. Why the hell you think Babyface didn't move that record company here? Because they saw what was going on in Atlanta. So, you know, we can go back and forth about the cultural relevancy of Atlanta. And, and you know, an artists can have these different arguments and debates about who started this or who popped off first. But at the end of the day, we all love the fucking culture of Atlanta because if we didn't, we'll move somewhere else. So. All right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. So we're celebrating 10 years of the Coalition DJs. And back in the day, uh, when people wanted to get records out, we had what we call record pools. One in particular uh, that I can always remember, D J. Ardino and the Million Dollar Record Pool. You know what I'm saying? TJ DJs, you, you started off in that, that field as well, doing, you know what I'm saying, hosting DJs and, and things like that. Uh, club DJs and things of that nature. You know, with everything that has shifted, it's a beautiful thing that we're celebrating 10 years of coalition. And I believe that Todd was supposed to be here with the court DJ, he's not here right now. But are, is the DJ, how culturally relevant or now is the DJ as it comes to breaking new music in the clubs or, or what have you, on radio or what have you? How is that still a big deal? Or is it like, okay, we'll just go to Spotify. We'll just go to Apple Music. We'll just go to Tidal. Because they can pay for the streams. 
Anybody want to tackle that? Oh, go ahead, teacher. Oh, if you're under 21 and can't go to the club, yeah, I guess Apple and Spotify, all that stuff works. But clubs have always been relevant. That, as far as I feel, I feel they will always be relevant. We can't do this without you guys. We can't do this without the DJ Nabs and the TJ's DJs. TJ had one of the biggest uh, record pools that we used to drive all the way to Tallahassee to support for years. You broke a lot of my records. So just about everybody y'all talked about, I've worked for. <laughs> so yeah, they're definitely relevant. Been on the whole call to the music scene, uh, and, and, and so you, you're mistaken if you if you feel like they aren't needed. You know what I'm saying to break your music, to expose your music. But I, I, I'd be wrong if I didn't also say there's a whole other side. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole other side. So it's like nowadays you got you got the internet, you got social media, you got streaming. And um, <clears throat> the streaming allows you to get directly to the fans, to directly to the people. And they can let you know right off whether you're working with something, if you're not. Um, so my big thing is, yes, make sure you don't neglect the DJs because you're always going to need them. But at the same time, don't, don't, don't put your eggs all in one basket because that streaming shit is serious. You know what I'm saying? And it allows you to reach people all over the world. You know, and, and, and once you learn about playlists and, and how to get your music on these various playlists, uh, that exposure and uh, spreading your music can be really fast. And it's funny because we was talking about this earlier, uh, you know, with Troy, and he was just talking about comparing the streaming to the old school as far as the distribution and getting that $8 a CD compared to the rate you get for streaming. Um, but it still adds up to something. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and don't look at it as the direct dollar. You know, how much you're just making off each CD compared to how much you're making off each stream. That, that stream is going to spread your brand, grow your brand. That streaming is also going to help your ability to tour. You know what I'm saying? And once you get out there and you can tour, then it's like all kind of additional uh, uh, streams of revenue that you can add to your whole game. You know, from the uh, merch, selling merchandise, t-shirts, hats, all that stuff is big money. Uh, the VIP meet and greet packages. If you're out there, you can allow yourself to, to, to be met by your fans, and that is what helps them become super fans, but you can charge for that. Uh, and then once you're already there, you can do capitalize and do after parties. So, you know, it all has its pros and its cons, but just remember there's a balance. You need the DJs, but you also need to make sure you get on all this new shit uh, because cause it ain't, ain't nothing like it. Straight up. Real quick, I was on a panel um, in Miami and I was the only DJ on a panel with Tidal, Pandora, Spotify. And it was educational for me because I have no reason to use any of those streaming platforms. You know, I take the fact that I have my library is crazy. I like to have a lot of pride in that. But after, after the panel, I, I actually listened to join Spotify and I just wanted to see what was, ex what was exciting about it. And I thought it was cool and I thought some of the video content was cool and everything. But, I, but the thing I said on that panel that I'm going to say now that goes back to the very first thing we talked about is relationships. Technology is a tool to be used by people. But your relationships with people will take you further. And the DJ are your people. We are people. And you need those relationships. So I'm a DJ, so you, you, you just lucky I ain't got my real DJ's Matter shirt on because I would normally have it on. But that's how I feel about that. Yeah, I would say that they're both important. But the most important for me is the DJ. Because when people are streaming, like when we look at stuff that we're going to add on the radio station, a lot of times you don't know who's listening to the stream unless they collect that data. But I can tell you what, when I go to a club, like you know, you just mentioned, I, I just got back from Miami last night at 10 o'clock. At 12.30, I was at the, um, where was that last night? Yeah, Royal Peacock last night. I can't even remember where I was at. But, but my point being is when I walk into a club, 
Unlike streaming, when I walk into a club and a song comes on and it changes the atmosphere in the room, that's my research. Somebody streaming, it can have a thousand streams, but if it's a 42-year-old white male who happens to be listening to a, a hip-hop song, that's not going to help me on my hip-hop brand, per se, because we're targeting a certain target. So I go to clubs where our audience goes, and I listen for a song that the DJ may play or the way that he brings it in to change the atmosphere in the room when that happens, it's like getting the fish on a line and yanking it up. I got one. And I used to have to go to the DJ booth and say, hey, uh, what was that you just played? Now I just hold my phone up in the back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, screenshot. So that's important. That's what's up. But for, for me, as a, as a record well, you know, DJs have always been important. It's, it's like the pen and the paper. All these other things that they've mentioned are very important. But we still have to go back to the basis of how we break records. It's nothing like going in and seeing the reaction of a crowd dancing to a record or putting a record on and they clear the dance floor. You know, so that, I can't see that on Spotify, any of those streaming platforms, but I can see that when I go into the club. Now the big difference between when I was young in my years and going to the clubs every Thursday through Sunday is the relationships with DJs. Back then we knew the DJ. We had a relationship with the DJ. We knew the DJ set. We knew when we could give them a record and when we couldn't give them a record. Now, you know, most DJs, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just keep it, keep it 100. Shit, you can't even get to them. You know, there used to be a time when we could walk to the DJ booth and say, hey man, you know, I got this new, I got this new record, put it on. But because of technology and the way that the business has gone, it's, it's hard to do that now, to get that instant reaction. But if you continue to build relationships with DJs and you're going out to the clubs and you're hanging out with them and you know, you know what type of music they like, you know they set, you know, you can, you know, give them that new record or whatever the case may be, then that's something totally different. But technology has changed. You know, back then you could give a guy 12 inch or 45 and he'll play it. Now shit, you gotta give him a jump drive. Yeah, you gotta give him a jump drive now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's even if you got, you know, you got you got somewhere to put it, you know, if it ain't loaded in this Serato. But the, the industry is changed because of the technology. But like I said earlier, it's still based on a relationship because he might not play it that night, he might play it the next night. But you still have to be prepared, make sure that you build those relationships, know what your DJ likes, know how to give them the music, whether it's through MP3s or wave files or a jump drive, to make sure that you got the music to go in there and then start building a relationship. Point blank period. It's still a relationship business. And we have to develop those relationships, whether it's with radio programmers, DJs, whoever, to get, you know, to get the results that we need. Alright. So let me take the time out right now. I have to introduce the, the latest member on the panel. It's one of my many roommates from the dungeon. Back in the day. Y'all please give it up for my man, Kujo Goody from the Goody Mob, y'all. Come on, y'all. Hey, appreciate that love, y'all. Thanks, man. Y'all better get hey, this history. No, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, okay, come, right. come on, hey. Oh, listen, I'm gonna, I got a question for you. The whole panel can ask, but I'm gonna ask you, right? Hold on, shh. Hey, listen, I appreciate y'all doing your networking thing. I encourage it, but just show a little respect to the panelists, please. Just a little bit. Thank you. Listen, what is it, Kujo, what is it about Atlanta artists that that the longevity thing is just massive? Like when, when Outkast got back together in 2014, 15, and the world just was on fire. Oh my God, they're getting ready to do this thing. You know what I'm saying? They're coming back together, they're doing this. VH1 does a movie on V uh, on yep. TLC. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and all of a sudden, they get back on the road doing their thing, doing big things. Escape sells out arenas after 18 years right. of disbanding, right. disbanding them. Right. 
Whatever that means. Right. After 18 years of being apart, they get back on stage and sell out arenas. Right. You, you can't name not one other young act or act in that age range that has done that. You know, granted, they had a little bit of help, you know, but from Atlanta, native Monica. Yeah, right. And then there was some other singer that came on the stage, too. But, you know what I'm saying? They sold out arenas. They broke records. You understand what I'm saying? What is it about the Atlanta artist that's, that's, that, that has that launch everything going through their veins? You know, because the Goody Mob is doing their thing too now. Well, I'm going to tell you something, man. Um, what captivated me about rap was when I heard this shit on the radio. And it was, it was saturated with New York rappers. Which is respectable. I don't have no problem with that. And then you got uh, ghetto boys come along from the south. I don't have no problem with that. But the thing about the southern artists is, is that they so motherfucking hungry. They want to stand on their own. That's right. They don't want nobody to say, well, y'all niggas sound like New York niggas. Or y'all sound like y'all from California. No. The main purpose with Goody Mall was when we came out not to sound like no motherfucking body else. No disrespect though. Absolutely. And doing that, man, we got respect all over the globe, bro. So my thing to, uh, especially Atlanta artists, man, stay hungry. Stay hungry, man. Don't be scared of nothing. Regardless of what people say that New York sell the most records or California sell the most records, man, just compete. Just compete, bro. That's my thing, man. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Already. Oh, we, we still doing it. Anybody else want to add to that point? You know, I look at it now, man, from the beginning of the game when I started. Just going up to New York, man, performing at the tunnel and stuff like that, man. It was like they didn't even give you a chance. Whether it's from the South, it ain't shit. They ain't rapping about nothing. They on, you know, they ain't got no content. But God bless me, the man. A lot of the students from the, you know, DMV were coming down here to the CAU and stuff like that, man. So it gave them a taste of what these records were doing and how people were reacting to them in the club and stuff like that, man. And especially when I dropped the Vice Versa joint, it just gave me a lot of love up north, man, up top, man. They start saying, maybe it ain't too bad down there, man, what they talking about in Atlanta on the Gangsta Tip. Then we come with Tip, then we come with Jesus, then we come with Luda. And the shit, it ain't stopped, man, it ain't stopped. So ATL, man, just do what you do, man. You already know, take pride in what you do. Take pride in the city, man. Wait. But, man, much love, especially all my trap DJs that stay off in the club, nigga, when everybody's sleeping. Playing all y'all underground artists' music. Like I said, man, I got I got another final respect for DJs because they put their ass out on the line for you. You feel what I'm saying? And they don't get paid when they need to get paid just for playing your shit in the club. So, 10 years, I think the DJs are still going to be here just like 1,200 turntables going to still be here. You feel me? You can have your you can have your digital stuff all day, but I guarantee you, if you're a real DJ, you got them 1200s at the house, right? You got them 1200, right? Like I said, man, y'all keep spending real shit. And for my new artists come out, just make one song that's talking about something. It's talking about something, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can do a thousand more songs about bullshit if you want to. But once you get one song talking about something, so your shit can be around for about 25 years. You feel me? But like I said, man, much love to everybody that support all hip hop music. If it was up to me, I'd change the name to something else. I would. Because hip hop is just sound like. You know, up against everybody else's genre of music. What does our what does our title sound like? Hmm? What does our title sound like? But like I said, much love to everybody out there for supporting real music. One thousand. Kujo Goody feels. I feel that there's going to be a need for the DJ, um, that personal one-on-one, -on -one people, blood running in your body. You can't replace that with social media. All these fake face 
Facebook friends, friends you ain't never met, never seen, and may never meet them, but a real DJ that you meet one on one, face to face, look me in my eye, and lie to me. Tell me you're gonna play my shit, and don't, and I'll be back, because I don't ever take no for an answer. Okay, 10 years. Uh, listen, there's always going to be technology, right? There's going to be some new shit, right? You know, most of us probably came from MySpace to where we are now with Instagram, right? And somewhere down the line, you know, those people that was on MySpace that you really didn't fuck with before MySpace, you don't fuck with them now. You know what I mean? But the people you got relationships with, right? You got relationships with them. You know, things are going to change. I, I would say, obviously, it's going to be new music. People are going to continue to do what they do. But pay attention to the things that mean the most. Again, your relationship, your own craft. And listen, especially for the artists, because I want to say this, because I thought of, when, when I thought in my head, when I was asked by Ian to be a part of the longevity panel, the first thing I thought about was how do you continue to survive? And I would always say, and I'm going to continue to say this, you got to survive success. Right now, if you're striving to be, do be an artist, be an executive, radio, TV, whatever it may be, you're in a hungry state. But once you get that success, for a lot of people, they think that's when you made it. That's the finish line. When that's truly the start point to the next chapter, okay? So, so when we think about 10 years from now, you gotta pace yourself. Pace your career and realize what's not hot today will be hot tomorrow, then it won't be hot anymore. Then you gotta reinvent, and then you gotta complete that cycle. So for yourselves, for what you wanna do and being in this business, when you get hot, do not, do not feel yourselves too much. Cause you're gonna need to see everybody all over again, especially the DJ. All right, and that's what it is, all right? Don't fear yourself too much, C. Tell them, C. Stop, all right? TJ, you got something to say? You good? Yeah. I, I want to tell young folks to, to stay in touch with technology. I think that the big thing that's going to be different uh, between now and 10 years is your ability to own your stuff and deal directly with your audience. I mean, we're kind of seeing that to a certain degree now. A lot of people are talking about cryptocurrencies and they're talking about blockchain technology. Those that are on top of that, they know what I'm talking about if I talk about blockchain. That's what people are going to be doing in 10 years. I don't know about the music. I, I really don't know if we're ever going to have a situation where uh, somebody has a classic song like a Pass the Troy song or a Frankie Beverly and May song that survives 10 years because we're in this instant throw it up on the wall, throw 20 things on the wall, and maybe one of them will stick. That's kind of like what we're doing. So I, I worry that, you know, what will be the classic format station 10 years from now? I don't know if we're going to really have a classic format station in 10 years from now. That's because they're just not making music for longevity like they used to back in the day. But I will tell you, you better get hip to technology because technology and music is always going to go together. Deb, you have something you want to say? I don't know, I'm, try, I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> I'm trying to see what the, the question is. And when you talk about 10 years from now, that's too far for me to even look at. <laughs> you know, like if you look at how this whole game is right now, you really can't predict 10 years from now. Because right now, whether you really want to look at it or not, we like in a little state of up and down. So right now this game could go any kind of way. You have to look at who's coming out there, what's coming out there, and what people are looking at. And the instant gratification is definitely big because we're living in a world of social media. So anybody can be a star tomorrow. So it's kind of hard to predict. Um, the one thing that I would say is that you are in control of this. And that's what I would say, step your game up. Stop letting people dictate this to you and let them know how you want this to go. That's the, that's the biggest thing. And especially for the urban community, we need to learn how to stick together more. That's where I'm at with this. So I'm not politically correct. I'm sorry, but that's where I'm at with that. We have to look out for each other. All records are good records. I don't care if it came out 40 years ago. That music is still being sampled today. Y'all have to create your own roles. And y'all have to 
to learn how to stick together. And here's a big thing, not because I'm sitting in here now, but I'm real adamant about this one. The DJs are the real A&Rs. And that's what y'all better know. Okay? That's what y'all better know. There are no A&Rs in the buildings that y'all looking at. The DJs are the people that break your damn record. Respect the DJs. I would have never got nowhere if it wasn't for DJs. Regardless of all the bullshit you hear. If DJs didn't step their bigger rankings, a few other DJs, if they didn't step there, we wouldn't have moved nowhere. So it was them that kept spinning those records. The strip clubs now is doing what? That's where all the records are being broken. But who's breaking the records? Y'all better learn that. Y'all better start teaching people how to treat you. And when you do that, you gotta put some order in this game. Period. I don't know where y'all at this now. I'm sorry for being late. Y'all hey, yeah, give it up for this Deb real quick. She came in stomping this shit. Rick, you got something you want to say real quick? Yeah, I'm like Miss Deb. We don't know what the, so what the next two years are going to hold. The language. Same way y'all can call somebody shouty and all this other bullshit that everybody call each other. Get another dictionary and start learning all the things that go along with it. There's a whole bunch of parts to this. You can't put a record out today and think tomorrow you're going to blow up and you're going to be on top of the world. It takes a minute for you to get there. So when you throw fast things out, you know what they say. You get it fast, it leaves you fast. And then you want to start blaming everybody for what's going on with you. Again, you have to teach people how to treat you. So if you don't know what the hell is going on, don't get mad at somebody else. Y'all have to understand what this is. And stop thinking people going to work with your ass for free. Stop thinking when your ass get there, you did all the goddamn work. Garrett, 
You can follow me on every platform, Arlinda Garrett. I'll be doing the fourth annual Music Business Empowerment Conference. Something Ms. Deb was touching on about learning the business. Our biggest problem is we don't know the business and we don't want to go and learn the business. I'm giving it to you for free. We're bringing executives in every year. This is our fourth annual. It'll be in September. It's the M. Arlinda Garrett. The Queen. Uh, you can follow me at Hurricane Dave on all social media. Uh, follow me at Hurricane Dave. If you're taking pictures and up here with these two beautiful women, tag them and then tag me so I can follow you back and I can repost you because I, I ain't got no camera to go like this right now. But uh, the nugget that I'll leave you with is stay true to the game. And uh, like I said before, do the right thing. If you're passionate about something, stick with it. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. It don't matter who it is. It could be your best friend. It could be your mom. It could be your dad. It could be whoever. If you have that real passion in your heart, do the right thing, you're going to be all right. All right, I, I got to just say my one speech to my ladies. For 2018, I really need y'all to know something. that This is going to be a very good year for us. But this is what you have to do. Ladies, it's time for you to close your legs and open your pocketbooks. I have to say that. Legs closed and pocketbooks open. It's time to get back to the business. The number four, M I Z A Y. That's on all platforms, also. Or Deborah Andy. Yes, love you, Deb. Love you more, sweetie. Um, my social media is DJ Nabs in Labs, so that's DJ N A B S I N L A B. Um, I just released um, my first book for those that's been around Atlanta in the 90s um, about um, Old School Sunday's Club, the Club Kai Experience, which is on my website, themaddj.com. And uh, again, you can find me, follow me on my social media. And, uh, you know, I think a lot has already been said. There's nothing really more I can really add um, than I've already said, but good luck with what you're doing. And, uh, you know, do what you love, follow your passion, and, um, you know, stay focused. Hey, uh, once again, my name is TJ Chapman. Um, you can follow me on all social media. Uh, TJ's DJ's. That's TJS DJS. Uh, and uh, last thing I want to leave you with is just remember this whole game, this whole business, uh, it's all about the relationships. Uh, remember that and, and operate as such. Uh, last thing I want to say too is, is uh, all you artists in here, uh, I do a live show uh, called the Free Music Review. You know, make sure y'all check in. Please submit your music. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and, and I'll give you live feedback. I uh, appreciate you. I'll just say this. I think everybody has pretty much summed it up. But I will say this. There are two things that I live by. My purpose and my passion. What is my purpose? Why am I here? And my passion. And I've lived by that for the last 30 years as I continue down this road. And give back. Learn something and give back. Give back to your community. Give back to these kids who are looking up to you all, who want to be just like you all. Set an example that people will be proud to follow. It's very important that we continue to do that. When there's so many bad and negative images of, of blacks out there and in this business. So you can follow me on my IG because I don't really respond back to that shit. But you can follow me at uh, Rick D.A. Runner. Rick the Runner. I'm a marathon runner. So um, you can hit me up there. God bless, man. 
and I am Ian Burke. You can follow me on Twitter, on Instagram at official underscore I A M B U R K E. Um, Y'all give it up real quick for this incredible, massive panel, please. And please give it up one big strong time for the 10 year anniversary of the Coalition DJs. My man, Big X, Filthy Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ Funky Monkey, rest in peace, Nando. Y'all enjoy the rest of the evening. God bless. Thank y'all. Hey, I was gonna ask the media to leave. What I'm gonna ask everybody to do? You can't go in and out, but we're gonna take the artists once they perform over here. If you're doing media, like I said, you can't go in and out, so you gotta make a choice. You either gonna stay over here and do media, catch them how you catch them, 